From Donald Trump's dizzying denunciation of NATO allies as foes to yesterday's about face after a head spinning Helsinki press conference with Vladimir Putin, it seems like up is down and down is up, or wood is wouldn't, whichever you prefer. Just to recap I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this I don't see any reason why it would be. The sentence should have been I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be Russia. But once again, refuting his own intelligence community's assessment of Russian election meddling wasn't the only norm the president has upended. Last week in Brussels, Trump rattled allies with his demands to NATO's secretary general that Europe pay its fair share in defense spending. They had agreed to increase their contribution years before, but that didn't stop the president from declaring victory. Tremendous progress has been made. Everyone's agreed to substantially up their commitment. They're going to up it at levels that they've never thought of before. Brussels, of course, was followed by a trip to Great Britain, where he upended the status quo yet again, challenging Prime Minister Theresa May on Brexit, and again attacking the European Union over his pet issue, trade. I think the European Union is a foe, what they do to us in trade. But for those with Trump derangement syndrome, where the president is blowing through a new world, my next guest says it's time to get a grip or risk more trouble down the road. It's a premise of a recent piece by retired Army Colonel Andrew Basevich entitled Curb the Paranoia, Anti-Trumpers. In it, he argues over-the-top reactions that Trump's behavior isn't benefiting anyone, saying, quote, for all of Trump's bluster, insults, and diplomatic gaffes, in other words, nothing much has changed. It hasn't? Andrew Basevich is Professor Emeritus, that was me at the end, of <laughs> International Relations and History at BU, and is currently writing a book about Donald Trump. Good to see you, Andrew. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. I read your piece as an open letter to those with Trump derangement syndrome, saying this is not a productive uh, exercise. Get over it. Why should they? Well, I mean, first of all, let, let, let me acknowledge that uh, our president uh, is a remarkably incompetent individual. He was not uh, prepared to become president when he won. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm astonished by his inability to grow in the office, to, to learn the ropes, to get better at it. So let's put that all on mm -hmm. one side. But that said, he's not a divine right, a divine right dictator. Uh, much of what he says is nonsense. Much of what he does turns out to be reversed or watered down. So I think we should learn to take him less seriously than we might have taken Barack Obama or George W. Bush or, or, or Bill Clinton. Well, you know, but you, you also say in your piece that, uh, you know, p uh, paranoia about Trump, and I'm paraphrasing, is worse than Trump himself, but you're only paranoid if there's not a threat that's real. You don't see a threat from Donald Trump? I, I, his incompetence is a problem, but the loudest anti-Trumpers think that he's a fascist, uh, believe that he poses an immediate threat to our democracy, uh, will jeopardize our rights. And I think those claims are absurd. Why, why, why does he not uh, represent an immediate threat to our democracy? He's, at least those, those never-Trumpers, as you described a minute ago, believe his Supreme Court picks have the potential to undo law that has been settled in this country for, uh, for decades. He is a relentless assault on the media, which has had some impact on the credibility of the mainstream press. Those are not threats that well, are it seems to longer me lasting. When, I think we ought to have a little bit of confidence in our basic institutions, in the press. I, I must say, I don't see the press kowtowing to the president or but backing do, away from the president. But you do see less support um, from the public in the mainstream press and more support for this notion that virtually everything is fake news, at least that which the president calls fake well, news. Well, uh, that, that may well be the case, but as far as I can tell, the, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Boston Globe and other outlets are, are on the case, and, and they ought to be. Uh, my argument is not that we shouldn't hold the, pre hold the president accountable. It's simply that it seems to me these institutions ought to take a little bit of a deep breath and try to regain some amount of e equilibrium and pay more attention to some things that may actually be far more important to our well-being like what? than whatever the president said yesterday or the day like before. What? The very things that, that enabled him <clears throat> to become president in the first place. Egregious income uh -huh. inequality. 
wars mm -hmm. that have become pointless and just drag on and on and on. Well, speaking of threats, let's talk. Uh, the president was asked today if he considered uh, 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 if the Russia was targeting us, meaning if they were a threat. Here's the president's response, and then his press secretary's attempt to clarify his response. Here they are. Is Russia still targeting the U.S., Mr. President? Thank Press, you very let's much. Let's go. And the president was, said thank you very much and was saying no to answering questions. Uh, I have no idea what she was talking about. But uh, it, it is quite clear, if one believes in the intelligence community in this country, that they are still targeting the U.S. Is, is, are the issues that you mentioned any more important than focusing on a country that is trying to undermine our democracy? Well, I mean, I, I, I would make the case that, yes, there are more important issues. I mean, let me, let me make the point. Yes, mm -hmm. Russia is an adversary. Uh, I don't think it's the most important adversary. I, I'm much more concerned about our evolving relationship with China than our relationship with Russia. China is a great power. Russia once was a great power. It's not insignificant. Uh, but it by no means uh, should be compared to the old Soviet Union. If you're a farmer in the Midwest or in California or you're a lobster fisherman somewhere in New England, uh, Trump derangement syndrome probably is appropriate, though, isn't it? Well, I think if you're a farmer in California or if you're a lobster fisherman, you really ought to be concerned about climate change. I mean, that in, in, in those kind of occupations, the greatest threat is changes in the planet. And again, of course, Trump dismisses that as, as a fiction. But in our preoccupation with Trump, it seems to me we're giving less attention to climate change than, than that problem deserves. Let me spend another minute trying here. Uh, do you know John Brennan? I do not. Former CIA director under Barack Obama. Everybody knows what he had to say after the Helsinki performance. Here is uh, 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 Brennan. Donald Trump's press conference performance in Helsinki rose to and exceeds the threshold of high crimes and misdemeanors. It was nothing short of treasonous. Not only were Trump's comics Im comments imbecilic, he is wholly in the pocket of Putin. Republican patriots, where are you? Is that unhelpful? I think it is. I think we should be a little bit careful about throwing around terms like treason and, and traitor. I'll be as happy as anybody else when Trump finally leaves office. But if the, if the game here is to impeach him, then it seems to me we want to make sure that we are doing it in ways that satisfy the requirements of the Constitution. Among other things, if indeed he is turned out of office, there's going to be tens of millions of Americans who, for whatever reason, think that he's a great man, are going to believe that the office was stolen from him. That's not going to be good for our democracy either. There was a CIA, former CIA agent sitting over there last night, the night before the former attorney general of Massachusetts, Martha Coakley, asked them both off a story in New York magazine if they found it credible, plausible, that uh, uh, our president was an asset of Vladimir Putin, that Putin was his handler. Martha Coakley said totally plausible. She's a pretty cautious person. The former CIA agent said unqualifiedly, it's the case. You don't buy that at all. It's plausible. But we are going to need more evidence than we have so far in order to, uh, to be able to see if that's true or not. You said in your piece that he is clownishly incompetent. You mentioned a minute ago, willfully, a willfully ignorant buffoon. So for those who believe those things, but also accept your notion that you should calm down, What's the agenda? Not only how do they deal with these other things, how do they deal with the threat of Russia if they consider it to be higher on the, uh, uh, the pantheon of uh, problems for the United States than you do? Well, I mean, there, there is a need for uh, NATO to step up to the plate. I mean, you know, the president's right when he says that the Europeans underinvest in defense. He's not the first president but, who has made that point. But they agreed to greater investment in defense up, up to, under up, prior presidents. Up to 2% yeah. GDP by 2024. Correct. Now, if, 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 if anyone thinks that Russia poses an immediate threat, then it seems to me they could do better than 2% and they could do it prior to mm -hmm. 2024. I'm not sticking up for the president here, but the point he has made uh, is a legitimate one. So what's your advice to, for example, Democratic leaders that are, I think it's fair to say, obsessed with the whole uh, Russia thing, the Mueller investigation, if they believe, as you do, that climate change, income inequality, the things that essentially gave, gave birth to Donald Trump, I think you would, uh, would argue, what should they be doing there that they're not doing, Andrew? Well, I think they need to find a way to step up to the plate and have the Congress 
once again become a functioning body. Uh, the Congress owns a very big piece in how this country gets run. If we sit around and say, oh, my God, the president's a jerk, he won't do anything, and, and you know, sort of uh, wave our hands, then it seems to me that uh, the, the Congress is as guilty as the president in not fulfilling their responsibilities. So uh, just the, the final thought. What's implicit, I think, in your argument is that that which has engendered the greatest fear in a portion of the American public is reversible at worst. Is that where you are? I'm not even sure I understand what you just Meaning, said. Meaning, uh, if you are exercised to the point of derangement syndrome, if mm -hmm. one is over Trump, is your mm -hmm. argument that even the worst of Donald Trump is reversible policy or policy that, that we will fix that which he breaks? Absolutely, it's reversible. I mean, uh, my, 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 my uh, hypothesis, mm -hmm. we'll have to wait 50 years to see if this pans out, is he is actually going to turn out to be one of the least significant presidents in our history because all the, uh, the terrible decisions he's, he is making, most of them are reversible. And if, we, if, we, if the electorate wises up enough uh, to elect a competent person to be his successor, then we can repair most of the damage. I think everybody with TDS has been comforted by your remarks, Andrew Bates. Thanks very much. It's good to see you. Thank you so much.